This is Kurt Anderson, and I'm talking to a guy who calls himself Mr. Media, but he won't tell me his first name. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to young adult author J.C. Isabella. She's carved out her own shelf as a writer of romantic ebooks such as Chasing McCree and the unofficial Zach Warren fan club. Stick around and read all you want. She can always write more. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of Florida-based Accios with mischief and mirth just a spell and a trek away in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. J.C. Isabella wanted to write books, but doing it the old-fashioned way, you know, with paper and ink, it can be a torturous, time-consuming process with no promise of success. And so, modern, resourceful, young 20-something that she is, J.C. chose the do-it-yourself route. She wrote her first book, The Unofficial Zach Warren Fan Club, in 2011 and published it in November as an e-book available via Amazon.com's Kindle and Barnes & Noble's Nook. That apparently was a pretty good experience, and within three months, she wrote and published a second book, The Council, A Witch's Memory. Book number three, Chasing McCree, arrived just 60 days later. And her fourth, the short story, uh, The McCree's Star Spangled Fourth, was in e-readers uh, e on July 5th. Now, I expect that she'll tell us that her fifth book, the unofficial story of Kyle B. Johnston, will be out any day now. Mm -hmm. The great thing about JC's books is that the barrier to entry, the cost, is very low, just 99 cents per title. So how does an author make money at that price? Well, J.C., who lives in Clearwater, Florida, has found a way. As a matter of fact, she quit her job earlier this year to be a full-time author. I think you'll enjoy her story. Now, by the way, if uh, you read a lot of young adult fiction, there are many more interviews like this one at MrMedia.com, including my conversations with Sarah Zarr, James Dashner, Lisa McMahon, and Heather Brewer. Finally, a footnote. No trees were harmed in the making of J.C. Isabella's books, or this interview. J.C. Isabella, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you. We're uh, delighted to have you here. Um, let's start with a, a high school composition from Mean Old Mr. Media. Um, what elements are essential to a J.C. Isabella story? Laughter. I think comedy, um, unexpected comedy, is big, but I think that family is a big part of it too because in every single one of my books there is a family element. Um, there's people involved. It's not just the, the young adults themselves because I think that um, when you have that kind of bond with people, I mean whether it's your friends who are your family or you know your parents, I think that um, my experiences around my family when I was younger, especially, and my friends interacting with them was a big part of um, how that kind of played out. So <laughs> are, you, uh, are you creating, are you making fun of people, or are you finding the funny in those people? I'm finding the funny in those people because a lot of the funny in that is everyday stuff that would happen to me. Grandma, my grandmother, says the strangest, most outlandish thing. Um, so... I, my, I come from a fun, goofy family, so to have that kind of, um, that just that kind of bond between people in the book was something that came naturally to me. I didn't, I wouldn't know how not to do it. So I'm in the middle of uh, Chasing McCree, where we have Briar and her grandmother. Uh, I wondered about this. Is there some similarities there between grandmothers? Yeah. A little bit. Um, my grandmother's not a drinker, <laughs> but um, but she will every once in a while she'll say something, and you're like, 
where did that come from? Why would you say that? Um, once she she was she was sitting in her rocker knitting, and she's in her 80s, and, and she she's very, very Catholic. She's Italian and Catholic. And she looks up at me and she goes, you know, sometimes I think we were all supposed to be Jewish. And I went, since when did you decide this? <laughs> said, Sister Mary something or other got on her nerves. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. So she's got to be in her bonnet because the nuns have done something wrong. And so she'll kind of forego mass for a little while, but then she'll just go right back to it. Has, um, she, has she always been like that? Or is, it, is that a, an older thing? I, I think um, she's always had it in her, but she's kind of kept it quiet because she's such a quiet person. But as she's gotten older, she... she she just kind of sat there and she's like, I don't care what people think anymore. I'm going to say what I think. She's just at the point now where she's not going to hold it in anymore. Now, when did you, uh, when did you sort of realize over the years that you were observing people and taking note of how they said things and the way they said things and what they said? Um, I've always been that way. I've been that way since I was little. Um, my cat's eating in the background. I hope it doesn't bother you. Not a problem. Um, I don't know, I've always kind of observed people and I've always kind of made people up in my head and what I think um, would be funny a version of someone that maybe take someone that I met on the street and then kind of turn the dial up on their ethnicities. Right. Um, so, I mean, my dad's a cop, so kind of observing people kind of came with the territory. And would he come home and tell stories of people that he encountered during the day? Oh, yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing. he couldn't really tell me a lot of things, but the... But there are some funny things um, that he would definitely he would definitely tell me some stories. Um, and my mom was a 911 dispatcher, so I would get some um, some doozies for her too. <laughs> it sounds like you have a, a built-in advantage over a lot of people. You have a lot of uh, a lot of good characters coming into the house with your parents. I, do. I have a crazy Italian family. It's, it comes with the territory. Italian. Uh, uh, Italian mean funny? Is that what we're saying here? Yeah, yeah, just funny, loving, goofy people who laugh at each other and laugh with each other, basically. Now, I know, so there's, there's you and your parents. I know you have a sister who I've met. Uh, yeah. Any other siblings? Uh, nope, that's just me and her. And uh, who do you worry most about picking up their characteristics? Your sister, your parents, your grandparents, or your friends? Um... Picking up their characteristics, meaning like a character. In, in, in a story, like saying, uh, well, this one, uh, this one has a habit of, uh, I don't know, uh, picking, her, picking her toenails. I don't know. And then <laughs> suddenly it winds up in a book and, uh, you know, one of your friends says, hey, wait a minute. Oh, um, I try not to do anything too specific unless it's just something I can't let go. Okay. Um, I, um, sometimes I'll do it. Um, Especially if I know that person's not going to read the book. Um, because I would feel bad if it was something really bad, like picking your toenails. <laughs> um, but I don't know why I thought of that. <laughs> I um, but, I mean, things do end up in the book, and I think it's more of a subconscious thing, and then I'll have someone mention something, hey, I didn't realize you put that in there, and I was like, I didn't realize it either until you brought it up. Um, well, so the, uh, I think I read the... Uh the unofficial Zach Warren fan club mm-hmm. is actually based sort of on some guy that you know who yeah. really, to this point, does he really still not know that there's a book that's... I have no idea. Really? No idea. Nope, none. His mom knows. Well, how does his mom not have told? Um, she didn't rat you out? No, she didn't. She's like my second mother. She wouldn't do that to me. And he would probably get a kick out of it. I just I haven't seen a reason to tell him yet. <laughs> I mean, I, I've been at this a long time, uh, longer than you've been alive, I think, uh, hate to say. And uh, I know I'm always looking for characteristics uh, of people to, uh, to drop in places. And, you know, early on, it would come back to me. Um, I, think the, I think the best example was when I was in high school and I was writing uh, short stories about people in high school and then I did it in college. And the, the stories tended to circulate. And yeah. early on... I would be a little too specific, and word would get back because you know then it was everything was on paper, so you know they would have to hand this and pass it on, and uh, you know they could be very specific with me. It wasn't like they they just heard that I told a story about them, 
has anyone come back to you uh, with hurt feelings at this point? With no, no, okay. I'm really very aside from those few little things that will slip through, like a habit or something else, um, like a phrase or someone said that I thought was funny. I'm very um, protective of people I care about, even if we may have had a spat or something. I'm like, oh, I want to put this in a book. I'm very protective of that, and I would never want to put something in a book that would have the potential to hurt someone. Um, and I, I always, before I, I put the book out there, I always make sure there's something in there that, um, you know, just wouldn't be cool to put in there, I guess. Um, and if I'm concerned about something that I thought was really funny to me, or that I'm like, haha, this is really wild, um, I'll just say, hey, you know, I may have put a little something and be like, yeah, I don't, I don't care, it's fine, whatever. What about the people you don't care about? Um... I haven't met anybody really that I don't care about that much to kind of put something in there. Um, not that I know personally, but but people that, I mean, like you see somebody on the news and you're like, wow, that's just messed up. I've got to use that. <laughs> uh, I think I, I was thinking about the, there were two guys in high school who just drove me batshit crazy and yeah. just irritated me and I felt with no ground. So over the years, they have popped up in a lot of places. <laughs> I think, I think that, I mean, if you really look at it, um, in a couple of my books, there are, are a couple of girls that are not very nice to the main character, um, Lana in the unofficial Zach Warren fan club, and then, um, and then Chasey McCree, a couple of Briar's friends, and that definitely, I was teased a lot in high school, so I know that that stems a lot from that, but I haven't put anything specific to me. Um, that happened to me in the book, um, but I've kind of used my feelings as inspiration for those characters. So oh, maybe so that's probably the best way to put it. So you still have plenty of experiences left because you haven't begun tapping your own personal angst. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> well, and I wondered, in, in uh, you're, I think, uh, mid to late 20s at this point? Mid-20s, right? yeah. All right. So you're... Uh, why write about high school? Why write, write about that? I mean, are there things that you're sort of still kind of working through? I mean, listen, I'm 50-something, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there's still things I'm working through from high school and college, so it's not it's not like it's a problem, but I was just curious. Um, I think it's more about tone of voice than anything, because I was actually trying to write um, adult novels, and people would read them and go, um, you don't sound like mid-30s here. <laughs> and I'm going, um, well, let's change the age and the setting, and hey, look, it's it's a book. It, it was just kind of, ha I didn't sit there and go, I'm going to write a YA novel. I just sat there and went, I'm going to write a book, and the tone of voice was just younger sounding, I guess, and it, it just kind of happened that way. Um, I, and, and I think that writing about high school, um, that there's so much you can do with that. I mean, there's so much you can do with adult books, but um, there's kind of a freedom there that, you know, they're discovering things and um, they, it's, it's like first, I like writing about firsts that happen to people because it's the first time it happens to you. It's really exciting um, versus someone who's, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s where they've experienced all this stuff and it's kind of like old hat to them. Um, so that was the other draw for YA, but yeah, it was just it was just me sitting down and writing and then realizing what my voice was, I guess, and the tone that came across. Yeah, I think uh, that was something I noticed in, in reading is that it seemed you're very comfortable with that voice, uh, that kind of high school age uh, voice, and uh, I, it actually it made me think probably about five or ten years as you get a little older and you've experienced more things, you probably move on to mm -hmm. an, an older. Uh, people. Well, so, so what I was wondering is, are you thinking uh, that you'll carry some of these characters on for a while, and will they will they stay in high school, or will they be allowed to grow up? Um, Zach Warren, they're in college actually. Okay. Um, so they are doing a lot of growing up. There will be three books through the books. There's going to be quite a bit of growing up. Uh -huh. And the J.C. McCree was. It was high school, but it, it had a kind of a slightly different tone to it, I think, because they they dealt with a lot of mature stuff in there. Um, and it 
it didn't feel like a high school. It, it, it was a it was a cowboy romance, but set in high school. And I had this idea, like, um, you know, I, I, there's a cowboy archetype, and I was like, what if he rewound about 10, 15 years, and he was a teenager? How would he be acting then? Um, so I wanted to kind of explore that a little bit, but um, I am, in my mind, branching out, um, and I do have uh, the urge to write something for a little bit of an older set, but um, it will still have the same tone to it, I think, just because I'm that's I'm a happy-go-lucky fun person, and it kind of comes across in my writing. Yeah, I, I got that sense. <laughs> I, you know, is there stuff that you know you don't want to get into uh, with your characters? Is there is there a, a bar or a line that you've set for yourself that says, you know what, we can I can characters can discuss or have these experiences, but some of this other stuff. I'll pass. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, I, you know, it, whatever you want to read is fine, but I think that there, there's things missing for people out there who want to read a romance that don't want to have to worry about, you know, innuendo or certain heavy um, things in the book. Um, and one thing that I never really want to do is, is you know, sex, drugs that kind of stuff. It's just, um, it, it's too heavy for me. I'm not a heavy writer. Um, so, and, and I like knowing that someone can pick up my book and yeah, there's cursing, yeah, there's other stuff, but there's not that drama. I think there's so much drama um, and pressure in real life that when I pick up a book, I just want to not worry and have fun with it. So, that's pretty much, I mean, I may, when I get older, I may change my mind completely. I don't know. Um, but for right now, that's just kind of how I feel. Um, I mean, because you can do a lot with a book. You don't have to put every second in there. I agree. I agree. And listen, for as long as you can keep that kind of heaviness out of your own life, mm -hmm. power to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I know on this show, I, I, I turn down a lot of interviews because I won't, I, I, I'm not interested in promoting horror. Right. And I'm not interested in promoting anything that has uh, violence against women in it, basically. Exactly. Or children. And uh, people are always kind of shocked when I say, you know, you know, the publicists they want to promote, they want to promote something. I say, you know what? I don't care who the guest is, just not interested in that kind of stuff. So you know, you got everybody's got to draw their own lines for different situations. There's, there's just so much bad stuff out there. I don't want to add to it. Why put that out there in the universe? So I, I had asked you when we started talking uh, what the necessary elements uh, for a J.C. Isabella story would be, and I, I think we just sort of touched on this, but I was wondering what is not necessary and I guess it's the kind of things you were talking about right right that's not necessary for one of my books um, heavy arguing and drama and, um, and just I'd say drama I mean drama is good if you do it the right way but then I think there are some books where um, it's like okay I need to break it <laughs> when does the fun stuff happen um, so that's, and I'm just, I've always liked fun things and just, you know, I, I'd rather be smiling than sad. So, and I mean, there is some drama there. There are some fights. There are arguments between people, but um, I do them in such a way that um, it, it doesn't overpower the story. Or at least I try to. So, um, as we're talking here, you haven't quite hit your first anniversary as a writer, as a paid writer. Uh, but you've got the, the three three books and a short story out. Um, is it too soon to ask you if you're able to look back uh, at your at the Zach Warren uh, fan club, for example, and see where your writing has changed, or it's improved, or it's uh, evolved? Oh yeah, it it's really. I mean, you can. There's, I think, a definite difference between Zach Warren and Jason McCree. Um, I mean, Zach Warren, uh, that book, it, it came, you know, to be the idea was a few years ago. So that has been evolving. Um, and earlier copies of it, and I'll read it back and I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm glad I worked on that. Um, but, I mean, I'll, I'll even, I went back and I read it even now. I'm like, wow, you know, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm improving as I go. Which I think is great because, you know, 10 years from now I can go and go, wow, that's where I was and look at where I am now. So, yeah, yeah, I kind of can. 
And uh, how much are you writing each week? I mean, how many words or pages or however you quantify it? I generally try to do um, about 1,000 to 2,000 words a day. Um, sometimes it'll be more. Sometimes it'll be a lot less because I'll be doing other things. Um, I, but generally, I try to do about 1,000 to 2,000 words a day. And so that brings me to the question about you quit your job to do this full time. Now, uh, just point out to people who cannot do the math or haven't thought about it, uh, each of these sells for 99 cents. Uh, I will point out that on Amazon and probably on the Nook, you get roughly two-thirds of the sale price, I believe. Um, we make uh, 35%. Oh, you make 35 cents. Okay, so I have it inverted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for every 99 cents, you make about 35 cents. Mm -hmm. Uh, that has to you have a, have to have a lot of multiples of thirty five cents to make uh, make do. So I guess what we're hearing here is you're selling a lot of ebooks. Yeah, I, yeah, I um, I guess I do. <laughs> um, you, I'm trying to remember. Did you say that you left your job in March? March. And. Uh, you know, I don't know if you were a nuclear scientist or if you were, you know, working as a cashier at Publix, but, I mean, it was obviously you were selling enough and saw enough potential to make that move. I took a risk. I'm sorry? I took a risk. You did. And, uh, you know, uh, it's working out, I guess. So far, so good, yeah. I, did, were you surprised that that could even happen and, and you know, uh, Obviously, I mean, I know from talking to you and from what I hear that your your uh, family is close to you. Were any of them saying, "What are you thinking? Are you out of your mind?" Um, I think they were <laughs> all. Come on, we're all waiting to know. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I remember my mom was like, "Just do it. Just do it. You know you want to do it." Um, what I actually did was, is I stopped working full time and I just worked part time, mm -hmm. um, and then I finally fully left in March, April, um, and my dad is more of a numbers person, and he's like, well, if, you know, as long as you can, you know, do this, this, and this, you'll be okay, and my mom's like, just do it, just do it, and my sister's like, you yeah, know, whatever, <laughs> that's cool, um, she's like, if it works, it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of that mindset, too, so, um, and, and it really helped with me being able to finish things and get things out there. Um, so it, it was just, it was a mixed bag. And, um, but once I realized that it was essentially going to turn out okay, I got more comfortable with it. And um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a gamble. It really is. Um, I don't recommend doing it without a safety net of sorts, and that's the only reason I did that is because I had that safety net. So if it hadn't panned out, I would have been okay. I don't recommend someone doing this if this is like, you know, going to hurt you. If, if it doesn't, you know, you shouldn't just quit your job. Um, so if I had not had that safety net, I would have kept working until I was absolutely 100% positive mm -hmm. that this would have been okay. So Do, um, do you feel extra pressure now uh, to produce more stories because you are relying on that for income? No. No? I really, um, I still have, I have a safety net, so if I get in a little bit of a bind, I'm okay. Um, but, um, I mean, there is pressure, there's pressure when you do anything. I mean, in this economy, you can lose your job tomorrow. So, um, I think that it's a different type of pressure. Um, but this is something I enjoy doing, so the pressure essentially is worth it. Um, I mean, it's. I mean, you've got to keep your head above water. You've got to constantly have something new out. Um, so, I mean, if you're not doing that, then I could see how you get into trouble. Um, but, you know. So I imagine that uh, a lot of people who would be uh, watching or listening to this interview have similar ambitions, ambitions that they'd like to publish a, a book, a story, whatever it might be. Uh, a lot of the times, uh, I know from working with a lot of these people, that 
they're kind of paralyzed. They don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. Uh, any general uh, tips from an old pro now? Um, I don't know about old pro, but... Uh, a young pro, then. Young pro. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that the best thing you can do is just write. Um, and don't put pressure on yourself. Like, okay, I'm going to write a book because I'm going to put it out there. I think that's the wrong thing to do. I think you need to write the book because you want to write the book for you, for your friends, for people to read it. And then once the book's finished, then think about putting it out there. Because I didn't think about putting books out there until I'd already had a couple done. Um, and I think that, I mean, it works differently for different people, but, um, I mean, you're just starting out. So having that pressure that I have now to put books out because I need to put books out, you really shouldn't have that in the beginning, I don't think. I think you should just write. and um, Because your first book probably won't even be the book you put out there. Because I've written books before this, and they're they're in the hard drive of my computer. They're not probably going to ever see the light of day. Um, because you get, obviously you get better as you go. So um, I would say write a couple books. Write a couple of stories. Pick the best one. And then try. Um, that way, you know, you have, you're having fun with it. There's not all that pressure of, okay, I've got to get everything set up. I need to finish writing this. What if it's not good? And I've got all this website, you know, whatever. Um, I say take your time and enjoy it. All right, last question. Next book is Kyle B. Johnston. Mm -hmm. When will we see it? When will it be available? Um, no pressure. No pressure. Kyle is uh, taking a little longer than I thought he would. Um, he's stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he's he'll be out in 2012. That is a definite. Um, I'm was shooting for October. But I needed a little more time with them. So I can't give a definite date yet, but we will be seeing him soon. All right. Well, uh, folks, listen, you can uh, download any and all of J.C. Isabella's novels and short stories at the touch of a button uh, to your Amazon Kindle, your Barnes & Noble Nook. And, you know, I meant to ask, uh, iPad available through the iBook uh, store? It I'm pretty sure all of them are in the Apple Store. I also publish through Smashwords, so um, um, they should all. I'm um, iPad, Sony, Kobo, I believe Diesel. Um, so pretty easy to find. Yeah, if you Google me, I'm. All right. Well, and and on the if you're watching the show, uh, look down here on the on the post, and we'll have links to uh, her books. You can click on them there. And uh, also, even if you do not have an e-reader, a lot of people don't know this, uh, the Kindle, for example, you can download the Kindle software to your computer, to your PC or Mac, and you can just uh, read books uh, there on your uh, computer. So you don't even have to buy the e-reader to do that, just so you know. Uh, you've got a website. You want to give out the uh, URL for that? Yes, it's www.jcisabella.com. Very good. And I know you're on Twitter and you're on Facebook. People can search J.C. Isabella on both, and they will find you. And uh, let me just say, this was your, I know this was the first interview you've done of this type, and uh, you did great. Very, very proud of you. And yeah. uh, thank you so much, uh, J.C., for joining us on Mr. Media today. I had a great time. Thanks. Thank you. You can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate if you'd show some love from Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Marin. Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin. 
HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons, The TechCrunch Headlines, and The Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, BlackBerry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. That's stitcher.com slash MR Media. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party please consider calling 1-800-DIAL-DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. You can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening.